Hello, I'm Hal Lublin. And I'm Mark Gagliardi. Since the dawn of humanity, one issue has gone unsettled. With the fate of the world in the balance, we're here to settle once and for all. Best game show host. That's right. Don't worry, everyone. We got this. Podcasts should have a theme song. Podcasts should not have a theme song. Yes, they should. No, they shouldn't. They sound good. Yeah, but people are just going to skip past it. Hmm. You know what? You're right. We got this. Were we both just like pausing to see if I was we were going to do a I game show I thought you were going to say something. I did think that you were going to do something. It felt like this one needed a big game show style beginning, but we never planned uh-huh. the beginning before we start. So both of us just went, the other guy will do it. I'll be honest. I was going to do either a family feud or a Price is Right thing, but I'm generally the lower energy of the two of us. <laughs> and I felt like if I do that, it will come off as aggressive rather than like I, I would love to be. I've only been on one game show ever. You were also on this game show, not at the same time as me. No. Which was the adaptation of Taboo, mm-hmm. the board game Taboo. Which is basically just, it's kind of like Password. Yeah, it's basically yeah. Password. Hosted by Chris Wilde, comedian and actor Chris Wilde. Who was, who was a, a lovely fantastic guy. Fantastic host. He was a yeah. great host. He's a really, really nice guy who I got to know like years later. Mm-hmm. The whole thing of being on a game show is tons of energy. That's what they want. They want energy. They want weirdness. That's what kept me out of the World Series of Pop Culture, which if I had gone on, with the team that I had, we would have won, but we decided we're going to underplay our audition. Mm-hmm. And they were like, oh, three boring people. <laughs> mm, somehow we don't want this on our VH1 show. Anyway, I actually I went on a game show once I went yes. on Win Ben Stein's money mm. and they always have an alternate when you're doing a game show. They always have an alternate contestant who, if anything happens, they're sort of the standby in the wings. Right. And when we got there that day, we talked for a little while and they d- did a couple of practice rounds. And then they said, OK, um, w- we drew out of a hat who was going to be our alternate for today. And unfortunately, mm-hmm. Mark, you are our alternate. So I did not get to go on Win Ben Stein's Money. Then years later, I was working for a game show called Street Smarts as a contestant wrangler. And uh, on my first day on the job, they told me, okay, so we have to have an alternate. You can see that there's one extra person here. Here's how you do it. Just take the most boring person and make them the alternate, but tell them you pick names out of a hat. No, oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> so... Uh, I'll tell you- that was how I found out that I was the most boring contestant on that day of Win Ben Stein's money. Thankfully, we're not talking about contestants. We're talking about hosts. And we have a fantastic guest with us. That's who right. Not we do. yet been introduced, who is the master, is encyclopedia of all things game show, but also serves as the president of the Jim Henson legacy. He's a writer. He's a producer and a great friend of the show over the years. It is Mr. Craig Shemin. Craig, Craig Shemin, come on down. Oh, 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 my oh, my oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. I'm not the most boring person. Oh, yeah. What yes, is up, we're the- Craig? <laughs> wow. Now, Thanks for coming on the show. Didn't you work on a game show? Did I see your name go by on credits uh, on the, the uh, buzzer channel at one point? I did. Wow. On the buzzer. I, I, I Listen, the show I worked on which was a syndicated show called Temptation, on which I was a producer. Some people may know it better as the new sale of the century. Yeah. Ooh. So I, nobody knew it as Temptation. <laughs> Everybody probably knew it as sale of the century. I worked on it for half a season. My wife and I both were brought in, and uh, it was really fun. But they had filled the – like the staff office was full, so we did all of our work from home. I went in maybe twice – and I saw the actual stage once. So it felt like I worked on television without actually like the furthest away you can be from the actual place where you're working. I was really prepping for 2020 slash 21, seeing nobody and just working, just seeing who was at the time my future wife. Now, my wife of 13 years. That was my experience. Yes. I can't believe that I, you're the first person. I never watched an episode of the show (laughs) who has ever seen it or seen my name go by in the credits. I did. I now I have to look up the buzzer channel. This is amazing. I'm surprised that it was on buzzer because I don't I didn't think that anything on buzzer was uh, younger than like 1981. You're trying to increase their demographic. Yeah, Uh, they're trying to 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 lower the demographic to, (laughs) you know. 54 or something. (laughs) All of the ads are for the chairs that take you upstairs. (laughs) 
tubs. Yes. <laughs> and walk in tubs. Walk in tubs. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. Now, but, have but you, made Craig, by Ashley. Have you ever been on a game show? Have you ever been a contestant? Um, no, I, I, uh, of course went to the Price is Right once to, mm-hmm. uh, but did not get picked. And I, uh, they were developing a game show at Fox in New York at one point, And I was, somehow I got called in to participate in a run through in the office, but, uh, I don't think I've ever done an actual game show. Was it, they wow. knew that you were a game show. In I, think, yeah, I think it was a friend of a friend and they said, yeah. Oh, you know, trivia, we need somebody to come in and where did your love of game shows? How did this, how did you become this font of game show knowledge? Well, I think it's, you know, when you're a kid and you know, you want to stay home from school or, or what have you, there were, you know, dozens of game shows running in the seventies. So you would, you know, a kid is attracted to all those lights and sounds and, uh, <laughs> yeah. Know, like, oh, wow. Noises and, and blinking shiny and shiny things, you people know, being given cars. It's, exactly. It's shiny things. So I think, you know, watching Price is Right and Match Game and then Hollywood Squares and those things, things that were, you know, I, I think I was initially intrigued by the big flashy sets and lights i don't know if you guys there was a show called the magnificent marble machine Mm -hmm. which was a giant pinball machine and i guess that would have been when i was like eight or or so and you know you don't care that it's really not a good game but boy (laughs) that's a cool thing to see there's people playing a giant pinball machine and roddy mcdowell pulling this giant plunger back sending the huge ball (laughs) up into the thing and you know, you, you had a celebrity on each side pushing the, the flipper buttons, and that's a great thing. So I mean, over time, that fandom developed into something where, you know, you could better appreciate things, not just because they had incredible lights and sound effects, but yeah. that was a big part of getting um, – pulled into that world. Though it for, does for sure. It does seem like the simplicity of that is kind of a game show – pitch at least at its best like hey uh it's the middle of the day you're home from school here's a giant uh giant pinball machine what do you want a bunch of guys in suits sitting around a table reading no here's a guy here's a giant <laughs> pinball machine with a bunch of people pushing plungers on the sides yeah, exactly. ga- well, yeah. game shows in general i think especially daytime game shows are a lot like vegas slot machines and that they're big they make a lot of noise and you look at it and go i could win that I could win that. Some of them without any skill. Some of them you can just sort of guess. But the props, one of my dreams as a child, in addition to spinning the showcase showdown wheel oh. on Price is Right, which I think everybody dreams of, were one was uh, dropping the tiles into the box on Scrabble, and the other was rolling <laughs> the giant foam dice in high rollers. I ah, thought yes. those ah, yeah. looked like the most fun that you could possibly – like, I just wanted to go roll – like, if I, in real life, if I go to Vegas and there's a craps table, I just want – I will go spend $1 just to have a chance to roll the dice. Well, I don't know how to question. play that why game. Aren't they, why don't they use the big giant dice in Vegas? It would. I would. think it would cut down on cheating. Because <laughs> nobody can, you would know. Nobody can, like, sneakily throw out yeah. a giant foam die with a car instead of a one. <laughs> Uh, I think if I look, they would go rolling off the table more often. Yes. Would they get mixed up with others? Yes. Would that lead to great capers? Yes. <laughs> there is no downside to this. You know what? Just go crazy. Why don't they do it? Why don't they make the chips giant foam chips? And then when somebody robs a casino, they have to run out of there with like the bag that you keep soccer balls in over their shoulder. <laughs> just full of foam <laughs> chips. It would make Ocean's Eleven a lot more visual, right? You know, just imagine the the size of the bags they have to walk out. With. <laughs> Eleven would be the number of chips they made out with. That's why they would call the movie that's only two guys. Uh. Uh, we're, we're talking about game show hosts. Before we get into, I know you have a structure for this, Mark. But yes. I think I feel like if the three of us were to name a Mount Rushmore of game show hosts, and we got four, my guess is that three of them would probably be the same. But uh, without even going into who those people are, I think it'd be interesting to talk about what makes a good game show host, because there have been so many of them from people for whom it is their entire career to entertainers who have sort of picked up the baton to comedians. Mm-hmm. Craig, what do you think makes a great game show host? What are some of those elements? Well, I think the biggest thing is keeping the game moving while also allowing natural entertainment and, and fun to happen. Right. You know, you, you want to be able to uh, maintain control over the game and the audience and, and, and contestants 
and celebrities, but you don't want it to be devoid of fun and humor. I mean, that's that is. And the other thing to me is versatility, Mm. because a lot of the hosts, when you think about these great game show hosts, a good deal of them are known for one show. Mm -hmm. And that's something to consider as we as we discuss is, you know, if you are a game show host that's known for one thing, are you as good as someone who's hosted two dozen different shows but didn't have the same long run? As one person who hosted for 30 years. That's true. And some of those people who are known for one show may have hosted other ones that just weren't as popular. Right. There, you know, there was a whole, it was like comedians getting sitcoms in the 80s, in the 70s. And I would imagine the 50s would probably be the other time, like these sort of boom and bust eras of game shows. One of the yeah. problems these days that you're seeing is that there aren't really game show hosts. Mm. Mm-hmm. There are, you know, they... As uh, as has happened in voiceovers, you know, and cartoon voices and stuff, you're seeing celebrities come in from other fields. You're seeing movie stars hosting game shows as opposed to game show hosts hosting game shows. So you're seeing yep. a lot of personalities from television, film, recording, and suddenly they are hosting game shows. But that doesn't make them a game show host. Right. No, but I think on my Mount Rushmore, and we will talk about him at some point, there is somebody who is better known for what they did away from a game show. And yet you could watch any episode of their game show today and find it entertaining. That show was more about the host than the contestants, really. But mm-hmm. I think I think we all know who I'm talking about. But I, well, I'll leave it for the listeners get who there. don't know. This topic, by the way was suggested by Matt Bridges in our Facebook group. So thank you, Matt. Okay, are you guys, are you ready to play Best Game Show Hosts? We got this. All right. Can I know we said no clips? Could when, But when Mark <laughs> says that, will you just put the fiddling from Family Feud under him? That is the last time I'll ask for anything like that in this episode. I promise. Craig, feel free to ask for as many clips of anything as you oh, want. Oh, I plan to. Oh, oh poor kid. <laughs> Okay, here is how I would like to break this down. I have three different rounds of categories. Each round is kind of different, um, but uh, they will all, I think, guide us toward who we think is the best game show host of all time. And the first oh round, I want to, I want to, I know you don't have to do this, Ken, but wouldn't it be great if every time you announce one of the categories, we got the ding from Jeopardy when they announce those categories? <laughs> oh, you don't have to do it. That'd be I so just, great. You don't have to do it. You I'm don't just have to saying do it. What, what would be cool, but don't, you don't have to do it. You, you don't, don't have, have to, you do don't do have to do it. You don't have to do it. Ken's on this call, by the way, muted, and we, and we can't see him. All I see is his name, but I can feel the sigh. <laughs> it's just, just hot breath on your neck right now. He's so mad he would maybe break one of his collectibles. <laughs> That's how mad he is. And if you know Ken, you know. That is a a red hot rage. Go ahead. Okay. So uh, the first round is game shows that have had multiple hosts over the years. We're going to pull the best host from each of these game shows, and then we'll pit them against one another uh, all later on in a finals round. And the game shows that I have that have had uh, multiple hosts of note through the years are Pyramid, Family Feud, Match Game, and Millionaire. So let's start with Pyramid. I uh, I think a lot of these have one person that's most known for it, but there are some honorable mentions in there. Pyramid. We've got Dick Clark, Donny Osmond, and Michael Strahan. Our first battle of the day. Out the gate, we got a legend in there. Craig, thoughts? Well, there. I, I mean, it's going to always going to be. First of all, I think Bill Cullen also. Was it, yes, did you mention yes, Bill he Cullen? did. He I, the, he's Bill Cullen. I, I, I did go through and I weeded out a lot of them that did <laughs> that did that did fewer than one season or one season oh, or he less did, on, he did, on he did five pyramid years for many years. Well, yeah. Cullen, then I somehow just missed his name, and I apologize. Um, I, I think uh, Dick Clark, no question. I think yeah. uh, to yeah. me. Although I, uh, Stephanie, my lovely wife, did go on the pyramid as a celebrity guest with Donny Osmond when she was doing Avenue Q, and they made her bring the puppet and play with the puppet as the puppet. <laughs> as yeah, Kate she, had to, she played side by side Avenue Q style, <laughs> and um, they let her do the end game without the puppet, with it, just holding the puppet. Oh my right. god! 
but she oh. had to actually give clues as as Kate Monster during. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's great. How did Kate Monster do on Pyramid? She got to the winner's circle. I think three out of four. No, she. I think she got. She may have gotten to the winner's circle all the times, and she won three out of four. Or she she got to the top uh, several times. Wow. But they changed the rules so much on that. Mm-hmm. that they sort of did. You know, I Donny Osmond is is a very pleasant person and, and did a decent job as host. But yeah. uh, Dick Clark really did a great job. And he also was one of the few people they did up to 10 episodes a day. Wow. Um, I guess that's his DJ background then, right? Yeah, you're you're they, used to working just long out. hours. Of but he, uh, he had a great way of sort of coming in after the game and, and helping people realize clues they could have given. And uh, I, I mean, my votes for, for Dick Clark. Yeah. A hundred percent. And I think that last part, because I and I remember this vividly as him like, and it was helpful, but it also was hilarious to watch him get really close to the person and get, or he would get <laughs> he would actually lean into the clue giver. And so he'd be right next to him and it would be like, let me show you how to really do this. I'm going to give him a, two clues and he'll yeah, and, here's what and you he said. or she yeah. will get it immediately. And this was a time when, um, you know, it was appropriate at that time to actually rub the back of the contestants, you know, oh, yeah. while, while they were getting ready. And oddly not the, uh, he was not the king of inappropriate touching uh, <laughs> yeah. in game show host. We're going to get to that oh, person a little bit later. We'll get there. Yeah, probably very soon. But yeah, he, he was fantastic at that time, uh, at the time that I was watching, which is towards the middle of this run in like mm-hmm. the early to mid eighties. His two big shows were Pyramid, and then he was doing Practical Jokes and, and Bloopers mm-hmm. with Ed McMahon, American which Bandstand. Was always fun. And American Bandstand was still going. Did that show, I only saw uh, $25,000 Pyramid, or I saw Pyramid in reruns, and or maybe I was watching it as a kid in first run. So I don't know how the increments worked. I just knew uh, that okay. the Pyramid periodically, sometimes it would say 100000 sometimes it would say 25000 sometimes it would say ten. When it first began, mm-hmm. yeah, the $10,000 Pyramid. Okay. And it was canceled. I think it started on CBS and was canceled. Then it came to ABC as the $10,000 pyramid. I'm doing this from memory. So please mm-hmm. don't write in. <laughs> I have, I have so many stacks of paper around me. I'm impressed that you were doing this from memory. So $10,000 pyramid. Then it became the $20,000 pyramid. Then $25,000 pyramid was the version that Dick Cullen hosts uh, that, that Bill Cullen hosted at night and they kept it the $25,000 pyramid uh the $20,000 pyramid had gone off the air and then it came back on CBS as the $25,000 pyramid there was a brief period of time they did for one season a syndicated $50,000 pyramid <laughs> and then a syndicated $100,000 pyramid and then when it came back, we missed one person off the hosting uh, roles. John, John Davidson hosted yes. $100,000 yes, Pyramid. Yeah. For one year. For one, one year, year only. Yeah. And then the Donny Osmond version was just Pyramid. Mm-hmm. And they tried to do a pilot that they had a couple of different hosts do. And I can't remember who hosted it when they tried to bring it back before Michael Strahan. Mike Richards. Years. Uh, oh, yeah. Mike Richards did. A, that was just called Pyramid. That was on yes. Game Show Network. Then they did pilots in New York for another version of Pyramid. And then finally, Michael Strahan was the $100,000 Pyramid. But they fixed one of the problems of the Mike Richards and Donny Osmond versions where they would just use video screens. So you didn't have that kinetic conk of the Trilon turning. Yeah. When they brought it back with Michael Strahan, they blended two worlds where they did the Trilon, but they put video screens on each side so when they so they had the ease (laughs) of changing the category so they didn't have to put rub on letters on on plexiglass but they had the physical (laughs) clunk of the trilon turning so if you watch the the michael strahan version that's a a wonderful thing so the strahan version is the best version well i think technically it it's probably the most superior technical Mm -hmm. achievement although there's something Mm -hmm. really special about the regular wooden and cardboard Dick Clark version. Cause when you watch that and someone made it to the top, the stage hands would actually move the trilons back and forth in celebration. Yeah. You know, you <laughs> knew there was somebody back there just, like, oh. eh. 
I love an analog game show. It's why I loved uh, yeah. Price is Right so much. Exactly. Do I, do I remember right that 95% of that set was red carpet? Is that an uh, accurate orange, memory? Orange. Orange yeah. carpet, right. There you go. Please, Hal, come on. It was the 70s and 80s. Orange carpet. <laughs> For security, there were they, two Marines covered in orange <laughs> carpet with rifles ready. In those, in the Dick Clark and Bill Cullen versions, they sort of had some blue years that where they had a set in blue and then mm-hmm. orange. And But it was, uh, you know, for a long time, I think Pyramid was one of the last big game shows to be in New York before Millionaire came back to New York. Right. They shot and, and uh, Dick Clark would have to fly to New York to do Pyramid. And then everything, all, everything else he did was in Los Angeles. That guy was tough. He could handle it. What a workhorse. Right. So that was a long answer to your very simple question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dick Clark. Dick Clark from Pyramid. Let's move on now to Match Game. Match Game, the hosts of note. And please add uh, hosts of note uh, if I've missed any. Alec Baldwin, Andy Daly, Charlene Tilton, Gene Rayburn, Ross Schaefer, and Ricky Lake. There was also a Michael Berger. Michael Berger. It, the version they tried to do in the early 2000s. This again feels like one of those ones that there's one person who's so associated with this show. That is, they've had a lot of great hosts over the years. I think Baldwin's doing a great job right now, but this is Gene Rayburn. It's got to be Charlene show. Tilton. It's got to yeah. be Charlene <laughs> yeah, Gene Tilton. Rayburn. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely Gene Rayburn. Yeah. D- there's no, no question. When you were talking before about game show hosts who embody like they keep the game going but they keep it fun gene rayburn's the one that came into my head for that because that dude was swagger in a suit and he just had so much fun with all the with the guests and the uh and the celebrities that they had yeah i think gene rayburn uh no question coming out of that one when you're talking about analog sets also Mm -hmm. you know this gene rayburn was the guy who started talking to earl who was the the man inside of the set who would slide the things during the super match. (laughs) So, you know, he would actually knock on the panel and say, you know, you you were a little late coming on on that one. Earl was like, sorry. (laughs) And you you started hearing just the phrase slide at Earl. You know, it wasn't just, you know, he brought personality. He brought, made it care about Earl. Yeah. And then... When they switched, they got a different stagehand named Ori. And I'm like, what happened to Earl? <laughs> yeah. Is Earl okay? <laughs> Slide at Ori. What's, you know, I, like I was worried about Earl. Earl went into the witness protection program, but the that name that he chose was job Ori. For someone in the witness protection <laughs> <Yeah>. program. <laughs> so you I go into not- the super match board and you never come out. <laughs> I just like the idea that there are mafia thugs walking around the audience going, anybody seen Earl? Anybody seen? I, there's a guy here I'm looking no, for. He's Ori now. Oh, yeah. Ori. <laughs> oh, okay. I guess I'll go then. I also want to shout out that Gene Rayburn's run, which was from 1962 until 1982, covers no fewer than three and maybe four distinct eras of game show, which is the buttoned up early to mid 60s and then into the 70s, like the body. We're all talking about making whoopee and for sure, Charles Nelson Riley is drunk. Into oh. the early 80s where it starts to clean up again and, and move into just sort of a dip, like a, a slightly more wholesome era. Just it's amazing that one person was able to shift in those different times. That says a lot about his skill as a host. And that's something that even some of the people who, who might be on a Mount Rushmore haven't really had to do as much. And he was able to do, you know, he started as um, a disc jockey radio broadcaster doing a morning show in in, in uh, New York. And then even after Match Game, he hosted a show in New York that I remember watching called Saturday Morning Live. And this was like, <laughs> I guess, in the 80s. And it was... Seems a bit like derivative. A, well, it was. But it was, <laughs> it was basically like this uh, morning service show where he would they would show how to cook and, and do things. And he would have dog trainers and gardeners and, and things. And, you know, he's, he was amazing. You know, you, he would just instantly be able to shift gears. And he actually, I, I never really saw him in the neighborhood, but he lived only a couple blocks from where I live. And I oh. did write him once and he sent me a autographed picture, which I, I swear over the years has sort of, it. I call it the Shroud of Rayburn. Because <laughs> it, it has sort of, um, it was not the best printed quality photo. So, you sure. know, it, over the years, the face of Gene Rayburn has sort of, it looks like the Shroud of Turin. where it, it's wearing away in, in sections. And I'm like, it did, was this 
Ooh. picture of Gene Rayburn used for, you know. Yeah, he wiped his cover. face with it. Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> but it, you know, he, he is, it is a very special broadcaster. Yeah. Yeah. Gene Rayburn, I think, is, I mean, he'd be up there, if not on the Mount Rushmore, then on the rock adjacent to Mount Rushmore that's looking at he Mount Rushmore. He would be Rushmore. On, on Mount Blankmore. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move now to Family Feud. Here are some of the notable hosts. Again, please uh, let me know if I miss any notable ones. Uh, Al Roker, John O'Hurley, Ray Combs, Richard Dawson, Richard Karn, and Steve Harvey. Louis Anderson. And Louis Anderson, thank you. And and what's yep. his name? Uh, John O'Hurley. John O'Hurley. Oh, you did mention John. Yeah, John O'Hurley. Yeah. So if you did these guys in order, it would be Richard <laughs> Dawson first. John O'Hurley. Did it for 10 years and then came back. I think after Ray Combs. Well, actually, uh, Mark, we surveyed 100 people to get their. Uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> survey says, you know, this is a toughie. It is. Because I think that uh, while the nostalgic favorite is Richard Dawson, Steve Harvey does a really amazing job with the show. I think Steve Harvey does what. Steve Harvey does the thing that Richard Dawson did well, but I think Steve Harvey does it better. And I think he doesn't have the downsides that Richard Dawson has Mm -hmm. in that when someone gives a dumb answer, Richard Dawson was great at it. And Steve Harvey is great at it. Letting the audience know that that was a dumb answer. And it's hilarious. Richard Dawson, uh, you know, aside from being handsy, always he was lipsy. Lipsy. He was lipsy. He He wanted every woman. Under the age of 100 that was on that show, yeah. gave him a kiss and like, yeah, kiss on the lips. He didn't want one on the cheek. Yeah. Like, oh, how about a kiss? He would come in and feel like, this is not okay. I watched to be, as a kid. To be fair, I think yes. a lot of the ladies did want to kiss Richard. Mm-hmm. And did they? We don't know. Well, maybe. No, but they did at a, at a certain point, they did give it to the, to the, they presented the question to the public and they asked people to write in as to whether Richard should or shouldn't kiss the ladies. And the public voted that he should continue to kiss them. Now, ironically, when Richard returned to Family Feud, I think it was 1994, 94, yeah. he did not kiss the ladies because he promised his daughter that he wouldn't. He had a little daughter at the time who he had with his wife, who he met when she was a contestant on Family Feud. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, no. Look, you got you know, to kiss a thousand frogs to get a prince, right? Yeah. You I know, think not a lot of people can say that they their first kiss with their wife was when they were a contestant on the game show that he hosted. That's true. The other thing, though, that I think he, aside from the lipsiness, I guess we'll say, of Richard sure. Dawson, he always seemed so low energy to me. And maybe it, be, it was because my introduction to him on the show was after Ray Combs, who was a very high energy sort of, you know, little ball of fire. Uh, may he rest in peace. But Steve Harvey, I think he has what Richard Dawson had in that sort of wink to the audience. But it just feels more energetic, you know? Yeah. I, he, well, Richard Dawson was bringing the personality that he had established as a panelist on a ton of shows at right. the time. Yeah. He was Actually, the old grump on match he game. Was, he was carrying that over yeah. with him. I will say, first of all, being a game show host is one of the greatest jobs you can have in the world. If you do it well, you will work for a very long time. Mm-hmm. The pay is very good. It's the hours are grueling, but also I think the you get a good amount of really time off. That grueling. Cause you're right. working. You know, you're doing five days of shows for in one day. You know? Yeah. So you're doing 39 weeks of a game show. You're working 39 days a year. Yep. And then, yeah, so you get a lot of time off. Mm-hmm. And then it's... And you're, you're doing it in real time. Like, you're giving away other people's money. And people yeah. love you because you're giving them money that you don't have to... With the exception of, of Ben Stein, because that's his money. Apparently. Right. In that's theory. right. You, you would know more money. about it if you actually were on the show. Mark. Oh. Yeah. If you weren't an alter. That really hurts, Craig. That really hurts. <laughs> <laughs> but I do think Steve Harvey has turned the show. First of all, people who don't even watch it have for sure seen clips on YouTube, mm-hmm. which are, which sail not only because of the quality of the bad answers, but because his slow burn is so good. He really like has, this is a great, I, what is this 28th act of his career? Yeah. And if it were not for Steve Harvey, the show, I don't think would be on anymore. 
It was I really agree. limping along. Yeah. And there, this was a, a Hail Mary for uh, the, the producers of Fremantle and, and whoever. Yeah. They said, oh, well, you know, we have nothing to lose. Let's put in Steve Harvey. And he brought the show to the top of uh, syndicated ratings again. And then, yeah. you know, hey, and suddenly you're doing Celebrity Family Feud again and all of this stuff. Um, you know, I think that uh, Dawson deserves a lot of credit because he originated the show mm-hmm. and, yeah. and sort of uh, established it and, and made it the first hit and sort of uh, established the brand, so to speak. For but sure. it's, it's a toughie. It, it's really a toughie. Yeah, I it it, it is. And the other hosts were good. Louis, Louis Anderson was fine. Steve yeah, Tarn yeah, was fine. They did. Louis Anderson best. always drove me crazy because it was his voice would just drive me nuts on that. <laughs> doing, Top three doing, answers on the board. Yeah, doing his stand up, his voice, that voice works for his stand up and what he is saying. But when it's welcome to the feud, it's like, guys, this does not. This is, it is this is peanut very, butter and pickles. Yeah, it, it's a hard format. You know, it, it's it's hard to mess it up. Yeah. Yeah. And you have to really be the worst host in the world and none of those people were the worst hosts in the world to, to no. mess up the show but i think uh, steve harvey really uh, brought it a new life and um, uh, it's a tough one because richard dawson is, is so iconic i think i would throw the the other I, my vote is for steve harvey number one because i think he does what dawson did Better than Dawson did, even though Dawson certainly deserves respect as the pioneer and the person who launched the brand. And he, he was a very good host. He was my host growing up. But Steve Harvey not only resurrected the show and gave it success not only on television, but on the Internet, but he also brings some much needed diversity to the game show host field. It's going to be a lot of just. Straight white dudes, it's just, yeah. just, they have dominated and a lot of them are very good at it. And it doesn't mean that somebody, a person who, who does not fit that description wouldn't do better. But in this case, thankfully, you don't need to say, well, he's, because he's not white, this is why we're, we should pick him. I think he's just a better host, but it's a added benefit yeah. that he diversifies the field a little bit. I'm team Steve Harvey as well. Yeah, are we good? Are we good pulling Harvey out of there? I think so. I think, well, there's certainly majority rules. So, uh, Oh, not on this. I, I no, think... we have to oh, absolutely <laughs> all three agree at all times. Well, then I, I think I, I will agree. I, I mean, I've gone in, I went into this as a big Richard Dawson fan. I remain a Richard Dawson fan, but I sure. think that, um, I, I think that, uh, Steve Harvey deserves the, the win on this. All right. Yeah. We have one more in the round one of the game, and that is who wants to be a millionaire? Uh, the, uh, notable hosts of who wants to be a millionaire? Uh, Cedric the, did he say Cedric or Cedric? He's Cedric. He said Cedric Yarbrough, Cedric the entertainer. Yes, sir. Oh, it's actually Cedric the Entertainer. C- yes. C- Cedric the Entertainer. Get it right, Mark. Chris Harrison, Jimmy Kimmel, Meredith Vieira, Regis Philbin, and Terry Crews. So we're only discussing the American who wants to. Yeah, this is, uh, this is all American shows. We're all American, baby. <laughs> I think, um, uh, to me, uh, it's Regis. I yeah. think. Yeah. The show I don't I think mean, would have gone anywhere. They're all good people. Mm-hmm. I, I saw, I watched, uh, episodes and, but Regis, uh, set the, the, the template for this show. Mm-hmm. And it was not, you know, it, it was a surprising choice. You know, there was an old story that, you know, he was not the first choice. There were other choices before Regis. And I think some of them were dead, actually. <laughs> you know, they had, I think Bill Cullen was on the list of po- possible hosts and he had been dead for 10 years. And he still made it to network yeah. testing. Yeah, they wanted to test him. You know? yeah. uh, he can't make it in for the test. All right, we're still keeping him in the mix. He's off for only. <laughs> yeah, his, his agent is just... Oh, sweating and crossing fingers. Yeah, Regis, uh, Regis set the tone for this show. His, his humor popped out in it. His, uh, his, I think Meredith Vieira, uh, shout out to Meredith Vieira for her tenure oh, no, on great. that show. She was, yeah, amazing. she was really, really and great. her vibe just because, well, I think because she comes from journalism. But did anyone win a, win a million dollars with Meredith there? I mean, cause I don't know. Under Meredith, it was more like who wants to win $32,000 tops? I mean, that's <laughs> what they could have called the show. Yeah. Uh, well, I, it was such a big deal 
when people initially won the million. Now when I watch it, it feels like it's set up for people to not win very much money at all, which is mm-hmm. wise. They probably were throwing more money at it in the late 90s, early 2000s. Yeah, well, it was in prime they, time. Than they had before. Yeah, well, it was a I prime time show and an when, event. When they first started the show, the <laughs> million dollar prizes, and I think maybe the $500,000, they actually took insurance policies on them. Oh, wow. Because, uh, you know, it they would be paid off as as annuities i think and they mm-hmm. didn't want to you know there were there was such a small chance of winning that they rather than budget for them they just took out these massive insurance policies which would pay off and and pay the, the prize money yeah i we, could we, be wrong so if the people at buzzer blog are listening <clears throat> i mean i kind of love that idea like you know if i'm like i don't know, i like television i don't want to take television's money i want to take that insurance company's yeah. money <laughs> that, I, I wonder you guys should see if, if there's a possible uh, way to, to have a, a we got this million dollar cash prize sweepstakes. Ooh. And then you could take out an insurance policy that would pay it and make the thing incredibly difficult. Oh, well, listen, I love you springboard off of that. State Ken, you Farm, got that? we are available. <laughs> We're available, Farm. State Farm, to run a game under your sponsorship. We will give away one million dollars. We did have a friend, Mark and I have a good friend of ours who is on Millionaire. And I think won 125,000, didn't he? Yeah, he got high up there. Mike, we've had a lot of friends who've been on game shows. Uh, I, I think both of us pride ourselves, or all three of us probably pride ourselves on having smart friends. So that, yeah, turns out a lot of people go on game shows. Yeah. When I was working at, at Muppets years ago, this was when, uh, Millionaire was first starting and they had arranged to have Kermit the Frog as a guest. Um, you know, he wasn't a contestant, but he was just in the audience and, we did a little bit with him and, and Regis and we went over to this millionaire studio at, at ABC and I, I was kind of crushed because we're talking backstage and I'm talking to the millionaire people and we're getting ready to do this thing. And I said, yeah, I really like the show. I was trying to get on on the fastest finger and I'm hoping to actually make it someday. And they're like, well, now you can't. Oh yeah. yeah. We know you now you're, you're, <sighs> you've been here, you know, you've, you can't. And I'm like, and that's that I could not be a, a contestant. Well, maybe maybe go back now. Maybe you don't know anybody there anymore. Yeah, maybe they're or, all, put a, or put a fake mustache on. Yeah, change your name. <laughs> also, I love the idea that Kermit the Frog was not a contestant or the host. He was in the audience. And I kind of wish you guys hadn't done a bit with Regis. And it's just hard to do the when they would finger pull out <laughs> right, when you've got wires. flippers. But if they just pulled out the camera and I'm watching it at home to see like, wait, is that Kermit the Frog just like sitting in the audience? Like, and it never gets mentioned. He's just there. Because in the Muppet world, there's Muppets eat in restaurants. They just, you know, go about their business. Or just, uh, where your fr- your college friend is here? Yeah, that's New Zealand. He and I went to university. <laughs> we were roommates. <laughs> Throwing fish. Um, All right. <laughs> it's definitely Regis. It's for definitely sure. Regis. And by the way, I, I think I maybe mentioned this during this best game show period. But mm-hmm. the, the first person to win a million dollars on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire is one of my favorite game show moments ever because he had all of his lifelines and used his phone a friend to call his dad not because he needed his help but just to say dad i don't need your help i just wanted you to know i'm about to win a million dollars then amazing he hung up, gave the right answer and won oh, it's like the oh. uh it's like it's babe ruth you know it's babe yeah. ruth pointing all right so shot. the folks going into the finals from round one are of course uh no surprises here uh gene rayburn steve harvey dick clark and regis philbin let's take a quick break and when we come back uh i've got something fun planned for round two is this break when we hear all the good things about the uh, max fun shows and all of that well, well yes it is crap. it is huh. do we know which shows are going to be promoted during this Ooh, let's find out we, they should promote the game show. Go oh, fact yeah. Yourself, Go fact yourself. Go fact yourself. My friend J. Keith Van Stratton. Oh, yeah. Good we call. should do a set thing about the best <clears throat> game show host on Max Fun. Ooh. It's J. Keith. I wish to talk about J. Keith because he hosted Beat the Geeks. Yes. As, As did the, the real the great uh, what's, my, the, what's My Line on Stage. Wait, who was J. Keith That's right. on Beat the Geeks? The Keith Van Stratton. He was, he was the, host. the host on one season. Yeah. I was there when Blaine was. I did go. I went. I won beat season the Geek, two. One beat the geeks once. I wanted to go on that show so badly. It was fun. I like. I wanted to go on and beat the wrestling geek. I know I could have beaten him. I beat the movie geek in the finals. Nice. Hi, I'm Joe Firestone. And I'm Manolo Moreno. And we host After Game Show, a podcast where listeners submit games and we play them regardless of quality with a dozen listeners from around the world. We've had folks call in from as far as Sweden, South Africa, and the Philippines. Here's an example. 
This is a game we call Zooey Deschanel, where you turn a celebrity's name into an animal pun. You have an example, Manolo? Brad Gorilla Pit. Oh, that's a pun on Gorilla Pit? Yep. I don't know. If that's, that's Brad Pitt. Oh, okay. That's a high quality game that you yeah. could expect. Dr. Game Show has new episodes every other Wednesday on Maximum Fun. Check us out, please. Hey, Jay Keith. Hey, Helen. Hey, you've got another true false quiz for me? Yep. Our trivia podcast, Go Fact Yourself, used to be in front of a live audience. True. Turns out that's not so safe anymore. Correct. Next. Unfortunately, this means we can no longer record the show. False. The show still comes out every first and third Friday of the month. Correct. Finally, we still have great celebrity guests answering trivia about things they love on every episode of Go Fact Yourself. Definitely true. And for bonus points, name some of them. Recently, we've had uh, Ophira Eisenberg, plus tons of surprise experts like Yardley Smith and Suzanne Summers. Perfect score. Woo-hoo. You can hear Go Fact Yourself every first and third Friday of the month with all the great guests and trivia that we've always had. And if you don't listen, well, then you can go fact yourself. That's the name of our podcast. Correct. Woo-hoo. And we're back. Moving on to round two. Okay, round two. Here's what I want to do. I want to walk us through a day, fellas. We're gonna. I've got three head-to-head battles. I have a breakfast battle, a lunch battle, and a dinner battle. Okay. And here we go. The breakfast battle, head-to-head, and it's. And I know. I'm fairly certain. I know based on the prop that you showed us before we started recording. Breakfast battle is, of course. The Price is Right, the show that always, at least where I grew up, came on in the morning after the Today Show, and I would always get to watch it when I was homesick. Head-to-head battle, Bob Barker, Drew Carey. Well, you're you're not you're you're not including the other hosts of The Price is Right. I see. This is why we have you on, Craig. I didn't know there were other hosts. Oh well, you no. You know what? I'm not. I'm going Drew okay. Carey versus uh, Bob Barker. All right. You want the original, original, original when the show started? Well, the original, original is Bill Cullen from the 1950s. Did right. I keep forgetting Bill Cullen? I That's for some reason I keep forgetting Bill Cullen. But then also Tom Kennedy hosted for a while. Dennis mm-hmm. James did the nighttime prices right. Now we're going head to head. This is all. This is all head to head battles. Okay, yeah. head to head battles. And this is a toughie because I'm a I'm a Drew Carey fan. I think he mm-hmm. does. Yeah, he does. You know, really he does job. a fine job. He does not have the same sort of grasp on directing the rules and and being precise about at making sure every you know Bob Barker when you watch everything he says is a full and complete sentence. Yes, mm-hmm. and it's orchestrated. It's polished, and there's something that's both very polished and slightly smarmy about. Every word he says, <laughs> like he's chastising you yeah, that you'll yeah. get something wrong. And lately, the memory of Bob Barker, and then, then I, I, I was, I actually was in the audience for one Bob Barker show, and I met him at a book signing. Mm. And sort of like the the older statesman Bob Barker is very different from the younger. They're they're showing the Bob Barker shows on on Pluto TV now. Which the oh, the older episodes. Yeah, yeah. And it's it's great because it's free and it has it's a 24-hour Price is Right, the Barker era channel. Oh so God. you watch it and there's certain things about Bob Barker that don't really age well. You know, he chastised a woman because her name was Rodriguez, but she didn't look like a Rodriguez. <laughs> Jeez. And he, <sighs> you know, <sighs> he is from of Native American descent. Mm-hmm. And he would say stuff while well, like, you look like a Rodriguez, like I look like an Indian and I am an Indian. And you know, there's a lot of stuff on those shows where, uh, you know, it's it doesn't age well. Right. Well, he was in the sure. business for what, 51 years. He was on game yeah. shows and he hosted Prices Right for 35. Yeah. yeah. Did Truth or Consequences, which mm-hmm. was one of the earliest shows where it's a sort of point and laugh television where, where they're sort of, um, you know, getting entertainment at the expense of other people's misfortune. Craig, can I say just quick sidebar? I would love if you had, I I love your genres of television, point and laugh television. You said one (laughs) earlier, uh, service. It was a service television. And I was like, service television. Yeah. You know, a thing where they show you how to cook a thing or they show you how to do it. That's an actual Emmy category. Talk and service shows. I, I think I'd never heard service television before service show before. I think that's Makes great. Sense. Yeah. I thought it was a different meaning on, on depending on what websites you go to. 
Sure. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, that's 100%. Um, but it, so this is a long way of saying that, you know, while Bob Barker would have been a, a, a slam dunk for me, mm-hmm. it really uh, gives me pause after looking at some of these shows. It's still, he's still, I would say he's a smoother director of the game mm-hmm. than Drew Carey. But at the same time, I think I would prefer to go and hang out with Drew Carey. Yeah. Sure. Who would probably be as inappropriate as Bob Barker was on 1970s <laughs> television in private right. as Bob Barker was on 1970s television. Like, it, you almost can transpose, I would guess, their personalities. But it was during Drew Carey's era where they brought in male models. Yes. Yeah. And where they stopped calling models, you know, they used to be Barker's beauties and there were people mm-hmm. saying oh aren't they now carries cuties and now he calls them by name and each of them have microphones and he talks to them yeah so it's it you know it, it certainly uh i think drew brought the show into the 21st century it does seem like bob barker while a, a legend of a game show host and a very skilled game show host if this were a analog game show and we had a big cancel meter there's a lot of game show hosts on here that would move the needle of the cancel meter uh bob barker seems like he might move it like if it was if it was that little dude going up the hill in the cliffhanger game he might you know be cancel yodeling himself over that cliff Somebody in my office won a cruise playing that game, playing Cliffhanger. Really? Yes, which is my favorite, uh, absolute favorite game of that show. I like. I sometimes I wake up and and I'm like going to wash my face and stuff, and I hear that. Well, it's your ringer. It's when I call you. That's why you hear. (laughs) And and that game has a very simple formula. Mm -hmm. If you bid twenty, thirty, forty for each of the three items they show you, you will win every time. Really? It's you. I've I've not seen them do items that would not cause that win to happen. 20, 30, 40. Maybe. Thank you. You're welcome. Wow. wow. See, they told you that you couldn't go on Millionaire because you knew them. But the real reason was that you had figured it out. You're like that. You're like a card counter in Vegas. Oh, if only. So are we you saying that are we saying that Drew Carey is in this head to head battle? I mean, this is, I, you know, this it's, is David I, versus it's, Goliath. I don't think he's as good a game show host. Mm hmm. Yeah, by, by think, definition, I think um, that's the I think that's the issue. And if Bob Barker had not evolved over the course of 35 years, I think you could point if he was saying he learned a lot from his lawsuits. Is what yeah, saying. exactly. If you're saying you look like a Rodriguez, like I look like an Indian in 2005, mm-hmm. that is a more damning thing than to have said it in 1975. Right. Not that it was right to say it then, but this is like having the discussion of whether we can, you know, uh, about Buster Keaton because he did blackface and that's not OK. Right. He did it at a time where that was is generally accepted as it was ever going to be, which is also not OK for this thing. I think to say who is a better game show host out of the two, I think it's Bob Barker. In terms of who who is better for the game and bringing it into the 21st century, no no doubt it's Drew Carey. Like it shouldn't be on the air anymore if they if they were just replicating exactly how it was during Bob Barker's tenure. And it is it I guess it is a show decidedly and by design of its time because it's how much do regular ordinary things cost right now is the premise of the show essentially. But also, Drew Carey is really good Drew at Carey's it. Drew Carey is great I did, at I it. Didn't ex- I thought that was going to be the death of the show. I didn't think he would be able to do it. And I, I like Drew Carey. I think he's very funny. Mm-hmm. I love his sitcom. It, it seemed like an illogical choice, but he has done a fantastic job with it. And it will now last for as long as he wants to do it until somebody else takes it over. It's going to be like the Dread Pirate Roberts <laughs> of game show hosting jobs. Yeah, I think he's great. I think what he's done with it is fantastic. But I, I yeah, I would say that, Craig, with what you were talking about before, like the purely on a technical level, Bob Barker knew how to keep the game going. So, yeah, I, I think it's uh, I think it's a Bob Barker uh, as as um, the winner, but Drew Carey as a um, very strong runner-up. As a great yeah. steward of the yeah. uh, of where it's going. All yeah. right. And also in another 15 to 20 years, he may be better than Barker. Yeah. He's only, <laughs> and he I hasn't, have a feeling that Drew Carey would also make that same choice. 
I think he would say that that Bob Barker is a better host. Than yeah. Jones. All right. Well, that breakfast was delicious. Let's move on to lunch and our lunchtime show. Uh, this is really uh, this is not going to be a very nutritious lunch, but I don't care. Lunchtime show, guys. It's supermarket sweep. We have David Ruprecht and his sweaters versus Leslie Jones and the new version. Thoughts? Um. I'm going to have to go with Leslie Jones. On this. I do too. I am too. Yeah. She just, she, she's crushing every it. time I watch her or doing this show, it looks like she's about to have a heart attack. Every time she's, I watch her do anything, she is having the most fun of her life. And whether it was watching the Olympics, like her whole Twitter feed is her just watching television and yelling at the TV. She is the, maybe the best example of a person who is able to create work for themselves out of thin air. And it's mm-hmm. not, when I say that, I don't mean she doesn't deserve to work. She is hilarious. She is super talented. She was great on Saturday Night Live and started at the age of what, 44? Yeah. Something I think like that, that was when she started on SNL. She was great in go- her version of Ghostbusters is fantastic and she was great in it. And she's found like, I wish I loved anything in this world as much as she leaves, seems to love things like supermarket sweep, like the Olympics, like whatever she's watching at any given time and sharing with people. Yeah. And then you look at it and yeah. go, if we're going to do supermarket sweep again, there's nobody else to host it, but Leslie Jones, yeah. because she loves it. So it's much. so that show is so silly. So it's perfect for her. Yeah. And I just saw her as a contestant on celebrity wheel of fortune. She was amazing. You yeah. know, there's a, a movie, uh, face in the crowd with Andy Griffith. Mm-hmm. And there's a line that, that he has in it where he says, I, I put my whole self into everything I do. And that's what she does. I mean, yeah. she's just, I, I think she's amazing doing that show and uh, I, everything she does. But I do want to give a shout out to David Ruprecht, his hilarious yeah. sweaters and his oh, yes. little lifting finger point that he would always do. Or is that, or am I confusing him with the amazing discoveries guy? <laughs> That's hey, David Ruprecht with us. Uh, we'll see you next time on Supermarket Sweep. And he always While we're talking about that, Cosby we also sweaters. mention that, uh, you know, any discussion of game show hosts, mm-hmm. we should mention game show announcers just too. Yeah. We can do a follow-up show with the best game show announcer. Sure. Yeah, I think I'll we I'll make should. myself available. All Johnny right. Johnny Gilbert. Johnny Gilbert's brilliant. Was, yeah, yeah. He did uh, Supermarket Sweep. He did Pyramid for a while. And, of course, all, the whole run of this current Jeopardy incarnation all right lunchtime <laughs> lunchtime it goes to leslie jones guys yeah. this is a big one this is a big one you've just finished dinner or maybe you uh maybe you have dinner afterwards this is the seven o'clock to eight o'clock block we're doing it right now and we're only pulling one of them the seven o'clock to eight o'clock block in most places sometimes they reverse them it's the merv griffin television hour wheel of fortune versus jeopardy we are doing Pat Sajak versus the late, great Alex Trebek. I told you I might tear this down to the ground, and I'm going to do it right now. There's <laughs> no way we're choosing between the two of that. There's no Pat way Sajak that sucks. But, no, he doesn't. Pat Sajak is way no, better than you think he is. Pat Sajak. He's way better than you think no. he is. Craig, back me up. Am I right? Well, we're both going to call you. Come to whoever you I, love more. I, <laughs> Craig, 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 I have a Slim Jim. I'm opening a Slim Jim. I'm opening a Slim Jim. Craig, I have two ooh, Slim Jims. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> okay. Um, here, here's the thing. I, I mean, lately, uh, Pat Sajak just doesn't look like he wants to be there anymore. That's but, the thing. Maybe it's just because I'm seeing the recent episodes and he just, he does like, he's just not engaging with anyone. Alex Trebek literally was doing the show on his deathbed he right, yeah. he you know that's what kept him going and you know alex trebek has his uh you know negative aspects in terms of of, of the way of, of his hosting but i always thought that not only did he want to be there he needed to be there and that was you know it was it was uh you know he was the one going out doing the clues you know he would um, for when the show came back in the eighties, he produced the first seasons. Oh, I didn't know in addition that. to to hosting it. So I, I, you know, I think that Pat Sajak, when he took over Wheel from Chuck Woolery, who mm-hmm. I won't even discuss, right? Pat did a great job. You know, he, he was a very personable, funny host. But over the years, it just seems like he lost interest and passion. Yeah, he seems like. 
like, have you ever, did you ever read, ride the great movie ride? Yeah. Yeah. He seems, or like the, he seems like the jungle cruise, uh, <sighs> skipper that's been there for so long that he's just like, he, it seems like he tunes out, uh, at the beginning of that- the episode. I've always gotten that energy off of him, though. I've <laughs> never thought that out he wants beginning. to be there. I I never look at they're they're so different from one another. And now we're off. At, we're, now we're not into people who are hosting the same show. And there are other people I think to to discuss and mm-hmm. throw in as well. I but I understand that this is a big one, and I agree that they are that they're going to clash mm-hmm. at some point. And I'm not picking Sajak over Trebek. My argument is they should both be finalists. Because he's been doing this job for 40 years. 40 years. He's Look, we're going to eliminate him he's eventually. Never seemed, we might as well do it now. <laughs> in, in all the time I've watched him, I've never thought he wanted to be there. <laughs> never. He always has that sort of like, well, all right, let's take a look at the bank. All right. Like, that's his rhythm to me all and, the time. And Alex Trebek had to be there because he he had a, a, a goal in life to be condescending to some of the contestants. He did do Alex Trebek. I look, I am a, I'm a lifelong diehard Alex Trebek fan. I cried on Friday when they played his final episode and the tribute, but it did always drive me crazy when someone would get a question, right. And let's be honest. It was through most of the eighties and nineties, usually women that he did this to more than men where someone would get an answer, right. And he'd go, yes, good for you. Like and good he, for sometimes you. throw in young lady. Yeah. Yeah. There was a little, there was some condescension in that, but I think, I hope that, you know, it, 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 he didn't do it as much in the two thousands. I'll say that when I first moved to Los Angeles, I worked at Sony. Mm-hmm. And I would walk every day. You had to park way at the end, which uh, on the far western end of Culver, mm-hmm. Culver Boulevard, in this giant garage. And then walk, I'd have to walk through the entire lot to get to Sony Pictures Plaza, which is where I worked. And I would walk past the stages where they shoot Jeopardy. And I asked for a, for a story one time. I remember somebody telling me, yeah, one time he just disappeared off of the set and nobody knew where he was. And then he came back an hour or two later, he'd gone to go get a haircut. (laughs) Just didn't tell anybody (laughs) just disappeared. So my, the image in my head for 21 years has been that he's just sort of like this, like fairy who flits in and about the forest. And (laughs) is he going to bless us today with his appearance? Yes, he might. Or he'll go to get a hair. Maybe he wanted a milkshake in Beverly Hills and he just disappeared. So I I love that idea of him being like just sort of a quirky dude. Yeah. He's a, he's the game show butterfly that lands on your shoulder for a moment. And you're like, Ooh, Alex. Okay. Bye. But he's also a gold standard for consistency. And, Mm -hmm. and he like, there's no doubt he is a finalist. I am, I'm simply arguing that I, I believe, that Pat Sajak should also be a finalist. That's uh, all. And I am arguing that we're going to eliminate Pat Sajak, so we might as well do it now. Craig, you go ahead. Uh, I think that Pat Sajak should be uh, eliminated from serious contention. Well, this is my last episode of the show. <laughs> I never knew what was going to happen until this moment, but I'm leaving. And on my way out, I just want to say, anyway, let me get through this. All right. First of all, Mark, I can't wait to do this in my organization. <laughs> you play some violin music under me, Ken? I also want to say that I poured my heart into the show. And now start making that violin music louder so he gets off the stage. <laughs> I'm not saying yet. I'm not saying, okay, I'll go. I'll go. You don't have to bring out the young star who's somebody's child. <laughs> that inexplicably Who just grabs just you by the arm and takes you off. Yeah. All right, I'm leaving. I'm leaving. Um, all right. So in round two, our breakfast, lunch, dinner battle, the mm-hmm. three people that we have going to the finals from there are Bob Barker, Leslie Jones, and Alex Trebek. One more quick break, and then we'll come back for our final round. And we're taking we, another break. We're taking another, we're taking, we always take two breaks, don't we? Haven't we started no. two breaks? I, did you just start doing the show? We start, we've been taking two breaks for a while. Ken, will you please uh, come in and, and tell everybody, do we take two breaks on the show? We're taking two breaks now, or I can just jump right into the final round. We're jump not right taking the two final breaks. Round? We never Thank take you. two breaks. We've never so taken two breaks. On. We've taken two breaks <laughs> multiple times. We never have. No. We've never have taken two breaks. Don't get sore just because Pat Sajak got eliminated. Um, and don't, all right. Just because Hal's lost the show. 
Go on, guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So our final round is basically just odds and ends of people that I uh, had nowhere else to put them. So I have divided them into two categories. We have Moonlighters and Old Timers and Journeymen is uh, what I originally. Okay. Meant. So what do you want first? Moonlighters or Old Timers and Journeymen? Let's go with Moonlighters. Moonlighters. That is, that is actors. <laughs> moonlighters that is mostly yeah, actors that have moonlighted as game show hosts. The thing Bruce that Willis Greg mentioned before Shepherd. that he mm-hmm. hated. And that is Elizabeth Banks, Jane Lynch, Guy Fieri, Howie Mandel, Jeff Foxworthy, John Cena, Jamie Foxx, Rob Lowe, Wayne Brady, and of course, Groucho Marx. And Alec Baldwin. Alec Baldwin. Well, uh, I, Alec I Baldwin say... I had put... I, I, there are a few actors that are no longer in this category because they were in that list of Blink game Gary shows. Ross. Oh, okay. Yeah. They were because uh, they were I, in Blink Gary Glenn Ross. I'm glad you mentioned Groucho. I would not mm-hmm. classify him as a moonlighter because mm-hmm. I, I, I would classify that as a career transition. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Because by the time he was started doing You Bet Your Life, his movie career was essentially over. Um, he did a, yeah. a couple more films, but he basically became a broadcaster and uh, had an incredibly long and successful run on that show. Yes. Um, yeah. I, th- but, I mean, he's, I think he's a legend of it, obviously, but I, I don't think, I think he is a, a comic legend. I don't think he's a particularly, and he's a great interviewer of people. Mm-hmm. But if you look at the purely, the game show aspect of you bet your life he does not excel. You know, there's a lot of mispronunciation of, you know, uh, who is known as the scourge of God? You know, it's yeah. a lot of it. <laughs> Sky, scourge, scourge. Well, it's the it's uh, the some outtakes where he just takes uh, thirty seconds to try and figure out how to pronounce that word. <laughs> um, and and I, I'm a, I'm a very big Marx Brothers and Groucho fan, mm-hmm. but I, I don't think uh, he should seriously be considered a, as the best game show. I, yeah, I, I would think he can him win. I put him on my Mount Rushmore only because he's so entertaining. He probably yeah, had the true. most get entertaining game show, but it really wasn't about the show at all. It yeah. was about Groucho Marx having great lines. My favorite of which is him having a guest on and saying, what's your name? The guest saying Milton August instead of saying, what's your name in September is so good. <laughs> and his ability, you know that a good, a good number of the things he oh. threw out were most likely extemporaneous. Yeah. And he's just like, you just get to watch that brilliant comedic mind. This is what it does now. All the energy is put towards the show. He did it for 14 years on broadcast television, did it on the radio as well. There is a great book that uh, Hector Arce wrote called, uh, um, I think it's called The Secret Word is Groucho. And it's all about that particular part of Groucho. Oh, there you go. Secret World of Groucho. Check it out. Not going to be a winner, assignment. but. He's great. I love uh, Wayne Brady as a game show host. I think he for, he can do absolutely anything in the world. Yeah, that's the next one I was going to mention because you said that this was – I had put moonlighting for these, but it, it also seems like a career shift for a couple of these people. Like Wayne Brady and Howie Mandel, Howie went from being a stand-up and sometimes actor – to specifically a game show host and judge Wayne Brady, though I'm sure he still improvises. He's, I mean, he does, you know, I guess Wayne Brady would be different because he does whose line, but uh, yeah, I mean, Wayne Brady is pretty high up on this list for me. He's, he's just a masterful showman entertainer. I think. Right. Is he a better host for let's make a deal though, than Monty Hall who did it off and on for how many different decades? Five, Monty six, Hall seven. Has hosted the, the show in every decade since the sixties in some way. You know, even yeah. in, in Wayne's version, Monty came and, and did a couple of uh, days appearances. <laughs> um, I think they're different. I think that that mm-hmm. Wayne, you know, the version of Let's Make a Deal that Wayne hosts is designed to use his abilities. You know, he'll have they have characters and they, they mm-hmm. have him. You know, I believe a song that he improvised on Let's Make a Deal won him an Emmy for best song for daytime. You know, so, you know, it's it's specifically designed to make use of his talents in a way that it really Monty did some stuff better. Monty could create the situation and the drama of the suspense a little stronger, I think, than Wayne does. Mm -hmm. And the deals that Monty did were a little more twisty and turny and would come back, you know, you know, there that you'd have a little bit more of a journey. 
Mm -hmm. on a deal that Monty Hall would do. Things were inside of other things, and they would show you a little bit of the prize that you're getting. We'll start with a supply of 50 yards of carpeting, you know, and and then you don't know what's behind the carpet. And that carpeting has been laid out in this mansion. Yeah. (laughs) One thing I was always uh, disappointed that they didn't do when they brought back the odd couple with Matthew Perry is that Mm -hmm. they didn't do another let's make a deal episode with Wayne Brady. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and have the new odd couple go and let's make a deal as oh my God. To Tony and Jack. Oh my God. But it's a tough one. I think, um, you know, it, 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 let's make a deal was, was Monty Hall's baby. Mm-hmm. And, and I think he, again, as a game show host, I think he prevails, but as an entertainer, I think uh, Wayne Brady does a, a superior job. What about some of the other names on this list? I think Elizabeth Banks does a great job on press your luck. Yeah. I think that's an example of a show. I think the new version of Press Your Luck is better than the old one. Oh, yeah? I haven't seen the new version yet in all disclosure. Elizabeth Banks is much more fun to look at than Peter Tamarkin. <laughs> Fair. And I, I just, I she mean, has like. more energy. Peter Tamarkin yeah. just felt like nobody, if if you she, said the name Peter, Peter Tamarkin, people wouldn't be like, the Press Your Luck guy? Because all you remember are the whammies on the board. You yeah, right. like. But I don't he remember might as well the be host. a thumb to me. He's like the Disney princess. He's just a thumb. Mm-hmm. Thumbs on horses. Saving and the whammies me. were designed. <laughs> uh, you, you know, the whammies were designed by Savage Steve Holland, who oh. uh, directed Better Off Dead and a bunch of other that stuff. Would make sense for all the artwork that's in that. That it has sort of a similar look. Are the new whammies retro, or are they like they're no, they're, they're pretty pretty uh, true to the original, updated, they, modern? They've redone looking. them, and but yeah. a lot of them are based on the original animations in mm-hmm. terms of the content, and they still look pretty much the same. The whammies are the stars of that show. Jane yeah. Lynch, I also love as a game show host. Yeah, I think because she's got like when she took over at Weakest Link. She's got that sort of stern. She's got that sternness that comes from, uh, or she's got a candy shell with a chocolate interior. You know what I mean? Like, yes, which I, I think is a Ann fun Robinson. thing. That's Ann, Ann Robinson's, Robinson's show. Yeah, but we're not. But again, we're not. We're not comparing. Her. We're not going head to head right now within the right. shows. We're going I of know. the Moonlighters. Who is? But right, I oh of the Moonlighters. Yeah, that's the category right now. Ugh. I think it's Wayne Brady. I think it's Wayne Brady, too. I would rather watch him coast a show than anybody else. I can't even remember half of the people you mentioned on that list. Guy Fieri. Hal. No. Uh, Guy Fieri. Hard pass. Hal. Hard pass. Hal. Hard pass. Hal. Listen, I, look, let me make it. I'd like to release a public statement on Guy, Guy Fieri. <laughs> yes, I said his name right. I have respect for pronunciations. With a name like mine, you have to. I'm Hal? sure... I appreciate all of the positive things that people say about him. I'm sure he's a fine human being and I wish him nothing but the best. I'm glad he helps restaurant workers, all the good work that he does. I hope that continues forever and may he be a blessing upon this earth. If I have to watch him go into a kitchen one more time and cough and spit while he handles their food <laughs> and see another place ruined that I can never go again and never will, I am going to throw my television into the ocean. And I don't, I like, I don't, I can't, that is what he represents for me when I see him on a television screen. And I think if, if he wasn't doing that stuff and maybe just collecting money from his restaurant that we went to in New York, which was terrible. And the dessert was that, good. No, it wasn't. That chocolate mint pie was good. It was better than what we ate before. That's why it was good. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> but how he put salami on his nachos. The big Again, question is that you were in New York and you didn't invite me. I know. I know. This was years this ago. Was, I don't think before we, we met, met you yet. yet. All right. This is too early. Yeah. No. If it, the next time we're all in New York, we're going together to get guy to, guys to get Italian guy Italian nachos. <laughs> yeah. I don't think get... that restaurant is there anymore. <laughs> oh, oh no. what a shame. Listen, <laughs> I did forgot that he was the original minute to win it host. Yeah. And then uh, taken over by Apollo Anton Ono, who I forgot to put on the list of uh of Moonlighters. Yeah, I love the idea of that game. I don't mm-hmm. particularly care. He was Guy Fieri was a better host. He's certainly more of a charismatic kind of entertainer guy. Also, uh, Shatner wasn't wasn't on that list that you. Uh, oh shit! What did he host? There was a uh, show he did on um, CBS, I think. It's called Who's Denny Crane? <laughs> yeah. 
You know what I think it is, though, now? I think looking at this list, because all of the people on this list, when I look at their name, what do I think of first? Mm -hmm. And it's Elizabeth Banks, I think of Hunger Games. Jane Lynch, I think of Glee. Guy Fieri, I think of uh, his masterful work in the kitchen. Jeff Foxworthy, I think of Redneck. But Wayne Brady, I think Let's Make a Deal. No, I I give you that one. I want to say that I I think it's it's Wayne Brady, but I do want to voice... Uh, support for Elizabeth Banks because yes. um, yeah. they did a, a flawless job of bringing that show back. They use the same music and they, it's a bigger, grander version of the same set. You would be able, you know, you look at that in a minute, you know what game it is, you know what you're playing. They use the same voiceover script to introduce it. And it's that they, they were reverent to the original, but brought it up to date in a way that was very well done. I think Elizabeth Banks did a great job. Awesome. All right. Now let's move to I'm adding another thing to uh, old timers and journeymen and anyone else that Craig wants to throw in people that we don't know. And uh, also, David Letterman. And also <laughs> David Letterman had a game show. I and, don't know um, if he ever got out of pilot, though. And uh, and also a couple of honorable mentions that may have uh, not been on the big lists but that I think are worth mentioning. The ones I have on the list for old timers, journeymen, and odds and sods. Bob Eubanks, Alan Ludden, Art Fleming, Wink Martindale, Monty Hall, Ben Bailey, and Tom Bergeron. I would also say that here's where you're to talk about Bill Cullen. Here's where to talk about, because he was a journeyman guy, yeah? Yeah, I mean, this is a guy, I, I want to start just by, by saying a few things on behalf of Bill Cullen. All right. Mm-hmm. He did more than 30 game shows, I think. No kidding. You know, he had several long runs. He was the first host of The Price is Right when it was uh, on in New- from New York. And he did Pyramid for a few years, Blockbusters, did a show called Child's Play, where they would have little kids describe words and, and adults had to figure out what it was they were talking about. Um, did the uh, He did a show, uh, you know, on, on the... And and in addition to being a panelist uh, on I've Got a Secret for more than a decade, but he hosted a show. It was very unique. I think it's called um, How Do You Like Your Eggs? (laughs) Well, they'll they'll make a game show of anything. (laughs) Well, this was when um, (laughs) – no, and the reason it's like that is it was done – there was a a, a cable television service called Cube. Mm Mm-hmm. And it was in Ohio, I think they did a test of it. It was one of the earliest tests of the technology that allowed viewers to communicate with the cable headquarters so they could actually do polls, interactive polls. And they, they hired Bill Cullen to come out and host, like, for, and then they did a four week test of this show where they could ask questions and get responses from everyone watching at home. And it was either Columbus or Dayton or somewhere in Ohio. And the idea that this is a guy who could get on television in a, in, in a format that had never been tried before and to figure out how to make it work is amazing to me. And if you go on YouTube, I think there are some episodes of this and, and, you know, the whole thing was not incredibly successful, but this is a guy who was willing to give things a try and to try and, and did, he did an amazing job as a host, no matter what format he, he was doing. And he, he goes back to, I'm looking at his list. Now he started at winner take all in 1952 mm-hmm. and worked until 86. But I mean, some of the biggest names in game shows, I'm going to be honest. I never heard of this guy before this episode today, but he hosted name that tune. The price is right. I've got a secret. And to tell the truth, all arguably Mount Rushmore game shows of early television. Yeah. He was a panelist, I think on those, those panel shows. I think he hosted a few episodes, but um, yeah, there's a guy who just, uh, you know, I don't, I don't think I ever saw him do a bad job and he would pop up as a, as a celebrity guest and he did there was something distinct distinct about uh bill is that uh he had a disability he had a, a pronounced limb from polio so whenever you saw uh, bill cullen host a show he didn't have one of those big entrances that other game show hosts would have he would usually be there already seated and or they would figure out a way to cut you know, while he made his entrance, they would cut to the contestants or something. And it was at a time 
when it was very challenging for anyone with a disability to to make it in, in show business, he uh, really was, he blazed a, a trail without really, no one knew because they were always trying to figure out how to hide it. But I, I'm a big Bill Cullen fan. Oh, I mean, look, out of out of this list that I mentioned, I do want to give Ben Bailey a shout out because he only he he hosts the game show while he's driving. Yes, which is impressive. Yeah. Enjoyable show, super fun. Love Cash Cab. When I was working at Disneyland, Cash Cab was always on in the break rooms. For sure, somebody has had a heart attack as a result of the lights and noise that happens <laughs> in that cab when you get into it. Right? Or I mean, because some of them seem I I'm kind of torn. I don't like to feel like I can be tricked by television that things are pretty planned. I'm sure people know I, there have to be people who get in trying to go somewhere and then it goes off and they're like, no, I really need to get to 130th and 12th well, I'm or whatever. I'm sure there are people that don't want to play. We just don't see them. There's, yeah, there's, they leave. No but I'm saying, and, guys, they, they, I don't want to break the television in. bubble. Everybody knows they are getting in the cash cap. Uh, what, what I'm saying <laughs> is I hope that people, everybody knows they're getting in the cash everybody cab. Everybody knows they are getting in the cash cab. Yeah, this is my last episode of this show, Mark. You <laughs> ruined. I wrote a letter. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah really, really, Mark. Like you're telling me that the 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 uh, panelists on the Hollywood Squares really don't know the jokes. Oh my god, I, mean, I find that hard to believe. <laughs> oh, what's that? I watched. Uh, I watched an episode, by the way, of Battle Stars. Oh yeah, uh, oh yeah. That show is bonkers. You want to talk about just big, crazy sets and clunky gameplay? <laughs> It, I, well, that was all about uh, how do we do Hollywood Squares cheaper in a different shape? Yeah, it was Hollywood yeah, yeah, Squares in fewer, a different fewer shape. stars. We don't want to hire nine celebrities anymore. Yeah. How can we do it? With, how, it's, it's a six, I six think, of them. Stars. Yeah, and yeah. then so you have to get one, but then you have to like you. It, they've all got there's a number on the outside, but it corresponds to a number on the inside. So you have to get both sides of the, it's like guys it's already too hard. It's already too complicated. Unless you're going to do it with the cast of Battlestar Galactica. That was then amazing. you could have original Battle stars Galactica. Ooh, Ooh original. Yeah, you know. there you go. Dirk Benedict only. Is there so anyone the like I'm? People? I'm very happy to. I I put Bob Eubanks on there because Bob Eubanks is uh he's one of those guys that just was always on something a journey. He was a real journeyman, I think. Yeah, best known for a uh, newlywed game. Mm-hmm. But uh, you know, I I think there's uh, I don't know something. Um, I don't know. I I think that sometimes Bob Eubanks uh, made fun of the contestants a little more yeah than, than I, i'm comfortable with i think that but you know he, he did a good job with what he did but he also did some really weird stuff mm-hmm. in his off hours and, and oh i didn't uh, know he had to have a crazy crazy well no there was some uh, you know he appeared in roger and me he ended up saying a few inappropriate things the michael moore Whoops. movie yeah Whoops. yeah oh well, speaking of people saying inappropriate things, what about <laughs> Chuck Woolery? Nope. Pass. Uh, uh. <laughs> it sounds like, though, if this category is journeyman, uh, it sounds like Bill Cullen is the most emblematic of that. Yeah. Uh, Peter Marshall also. Um, I, I think this would be where, where you would discuss a Peter Marshall because he did an amazing job on Hollywood Squares playing mm-hmm. second fiddle, essentially, to, to nine celebrities for more than a decade. Yes. I like John Davidson as the host, too. I thought he did a fine job. And Tom Bergeron. There's nothing nothing shabby about Tom Bergeron as a host of Hollywood Squares. Yeah. Oh, he's he, great. He is, I think, one of the last sort of journeyman game show mm-hmm. host personalities before you start getting into the you know movie star realm of, uh, you know. Yeah, he does Alan feel like Baldwin. a throwback. Tom Bergeron feels like he was born in the wrong time. Or he was born in the right time to remind us of what uh, game show hosts were in an older time. Um, all right. So we have our finalists. Have we really gone through an entire game show episode without talking about Wink Martindale? Oh, I mentioned Wink Martindale in this. Wink, yeah. Was he in here? He was in here. Did Was I with you, Hal, when I saw Wink Martindale at Universal Studios Hollywood? Lord, no. No, I think I sent you the picture. I totally, like, I never, like, freak out and, like, try to sneak a picture of someone. But if it's Wink Martindale, who was, I don't think, working, but still had, like, the brown hair and the bronzer and the super white yeah. teeth. And his name is Wink old. Martindale. Or eight years old, yeah. He feels like, Wink Martindale feels like, when people make fun of game show hosts, they're making fun of Wink Martindale. I believe, and I think there, there used to be a toy. There was an electronic toy called Mr. Mr. Game, game show. show. I had Mr. Game Show as a kid. And I think 
I, it's, I, I may be wrong, but I think that Wink Martindale was the, the person they patterned Mr. Game Show on. It, it, he looks like Mr. Game Show. Yeah. I loved my Mr. Game Show. I think Wink Martindale is an uh, amazing host. Yes. And, and um, this, it's, it's a tough one. I, I'm a big fan of Wink Martindale. I'm a fan of Peter Marshall. And I'm a he, fan of Bill Cullen, all of whom deserve praise in this section. The only one of those that I know is Wink Martindale, so I'm going to leave this one up to you two. I would say when I was a child, Wink Martindale, that's when Wink Martindale was hosting Tic Tac Doe. I love Tic Tac Doe. Another one of my favorite. I, that eight, I think it was like a four bit dragon. It wasn't even yeah. eight bit. That, dra- the, that like, that's not a picture of a dragon. That's like six blocks, but you, you were scared to death of it. I want that exact set. Jennifer, uh, you're, Jennifer's not going to hear this episode. When we're rich, one there's gonna be one room in the house that's gonna be a model train village. We've already established that. There's no going back there. There's gonna be another room that will just be a, a faithful recreation of the tic tac doe set. I will that will entertain there. We will. We will entertain oh, there and they will work. So just get ready for that. You know who you married. I I think um I'll I'll leave this to you, Craig, but I, I think I know who you're gonna say and I agree with you. I'm just gonna um, say that right now. I don't know. I, I think I have to give this one to Bill Cullen. All right. Um, yep. I think that his versatility, he is a funny guy and he always was very invested in the, in the contestants and, uh, just kept the game moving. I don't think I saw him, uh, ever host a game show that he didn't think was the best thing on at that given moment. You know, <laughs> I love that. Were ridiculous. That's the Leslie Jones call. approach. Yeah. Yeah. But Wink Martindale, amazing, amazing person. I mean, yeah. that's the thing. It's like when you get to that level of host, be it Wink or, or Peter Marshall or Bill Cullen, there, there's no bad, there are no losers in a uh, game of winners. That's right. And also, his nickname is the Dean of Game Show Hosts. Yes. It would be weird for him not to be a finalist. Yeah. I would vote for Bill Cullen to get into the finals. Seconded. All right. So we have eight finalists. I think the best way to do this is to do our elimination game, where we'll go round robin style. And uh, we, have, we have nine. I have nine here. Uh, tell me which one I didn't get, then. I'll tell you the ones I have. I have Gene Rayburn, Steve Harvey, Dick Clark, Regis Philbin, Bob Barker, Leslie Jones, Alex Trebek. Oh, you're right. We do have nine. Wayne Brady and Bill Cullen. Okay. You said Gene Rayburn, right? I did. Okay, good. I have them a different. Can we talk about a couple of people that we haven't mentioned? Mm -hmm. There are two that I want to throw out there. And they, neither of them had super popular game shows. One of them is Alfonso Rivera. (laughs) No. Well, I shout him out forever and forever because he's a wonderful entertainer. And seems like a real good guy. One of them is Mark DiCarlo, the host of Studs. Oh, Studs. The early 90s dating show where people put hearts on their ripped jeans. Oh. And everybody wore a black t-shirt with a maroon blazer over it. <laughs> I just thought he did a good, like, he was very much a man of his moment who rose up to meet that show, which yeah. was wildly popular for a very brief amount of time. Yeah. But he, he did a great job. And then also, and he is no longer with us. There's Ken Ober, who was the host of Remote Control uh, yes. on MTV, mm-hmm. which was a wildly entertaining show. I loved Remote Control. In the late 80s and early 90s that helped launch the careers of Colin Quinn and Adam Sandler. And he was a fantastic host, like really funny, very personable, kept the game moving. Never like you really have to when your set costs $30. <laughs> Yeah. You have to, it is up to the, that puts even more pressure on the host to, well, I think also, keep the game engaging. Um, you know, when you have a show like that, which is essentially a, a parody of a game show, mm-hmm. if you're not running it like a good game show. It gets old really quick, quickly. Yeah. yeah. And uh, you can't just rely on being a funny parody of a show. You have to have a solid uh, show underneath it. I think he did a great job of, of making sure that the show ran. Like that. Yeah, he did. Really I want to mention, if it, as long as you're throwing out a few people, mm-hmm. before we get to this, there, there are three people that I want to mention. Jim Perry, mm-hmm. who hosted the original Sale of the Century and the original Card Sharks. And he was a, one of those great broadcasters who talked faster than anyone could imagine talking. You know, he <laughs> would just, they did a 60-second question round, and he would just come at you. And he did a great job on that. And then the two brothers, two brothers who were game show hosts, 
Tom Kennedy and Jack Nars. And Tom Kennedy hosted uh, Name That Tune for a mm-hmm. while. He hosted uh, Body Language. He took over for uh, Password Plus when Alan Ludden passed away. Alan Another Ludden great. was an amazing host, too. And yeah. then Jack Nars, his brother, hosted Concentration. He hosted um, uh, Now You See It. And they were brothers. The, the family name was Nars. And uh, Jack Nars had, was already on the air as a host uh, in the, the, uh, the quiz show scandal era. And then when Tom Kennedy came on, um, they didn't want two Narses, so he changed his name. I think he was Jim Nars, and they became Tom Kennedy. But, <laughs> That's well, a leap. All, yeah, all great, great <laughs> hosts. But not finalists. No, That's right. No. We have our finalists. Gentlemen. Are we ready to start eliminating finalists? All of these, I will say, as we usually do, they are the superlative members of their profession, and we shouldn't feel too bad about eliminating. That said, let's start eliminating them. Hal, have you figured out the order in which we should do this? Hold on. (laughs) No? Wait, hold on. Uh, you're better at the note. You can do a Sudoku. I've never successfully completed a Sudoku in my entire life, but I do a lot of crossword puzzles. Uh, wait, keep talking. <laughs> no, nah, Ken will just cut this part out. Ooh, or no, drop something in here. Like a clip. Yeah. Like a clip. Let's, let's go to a clip. Are you ready, Hal? Yes. You go first, and then Craig will go, and then I will go. I go first, and then Craig goes. Yep. We'll see how I did. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Hilarious. I am going to eliminate first the very, very talented Regis Philbin, because while a fan of Regis Philbin, I don't think he is, I don't think uh, game shows were his thing that I will remember him for most. So, and we have to start eliminating people. So goodbye, Regis. I don't have to give a reason. You don't need a reason, Regis. Um, Leave me alone. I, I, the clock okay. is ticking. All right. The password is elimination. Okay. Um, I guess it's my turn now. I, I yes. guess as, as much as I, I am a big fan, I'm going to eliminate Wayne Brady. I think he's a great entertainer, but I think we're talking about the superlative best game show host. He still has a long career. In front of him. He's got time. He's to, got time, Craig. It. He's got time. He can pull it out in the next time next yeah. uh, time we do this show. When we do this, we got this in twenty five years. We'll see. Oh, it's my turn. Who will I eliminate? I'm gonna tell you. I feel like the easy thing to do is to eliminate all the most recent hosts, but I'm going to eliminate Dick Clark, and here's why. I think Dick Clark's contribute the him hosting Pyramid, while he was a fantastic game show host. I think there are other people here who edge him out Mm -hmm. in terms of their ability to host a game show. And it always bothered me when he stood over that person's shoulder. It was so (laughs) smart. I just, I I did not like that. And I love Dick Clark. I'm a Dick Clark fan, but that was a bridge too far for me. Dick Clark is eliminated. That leaves us with Alex Trebek, Bill Cullen, Bob Barker, Gene Rayburn, Leslie Jones, and Steve Harvey. Mark, who are we eliminating? Uh, next, I am going to eliminate. I love her, but I'm eliminating Leslie Jones. Again, she's got a long future. If she wants to do more game shows, it's going to be amazing. And I'm very excited. And her joy is infectious. But again, I go back to that thing of when I think Leslie Jones, I don't think game show host. It's not my primary go-to for her. So Leslie, I love you. Please don't be mad. All right. That leaves us with Bob Barker, Bill Cullen, Steve Harvey, Gene Rayburn, and Alex Trebek. Craig, it's your turn. I, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a big fan. I am going to um, eliminate Steve Harvey. Steve I think, Harvey. Uh, I think that he's also, he may be a person who, if we were, if we went up to him and said, Steve, we've elected you as the best game show host. He could be angry about that because <laughs> he's done, he does so many things. So yes. I think because he uh, is beyond and, um, 
being branded as a game show host, I think I, I'm going to take him uh, out of contention. I also think to to back you up that he is the thing he is known for the most is not how smoothly he runs the game, but how good he is at reacting when it breaks. I down. think if we were doing mm. funniest game show host. Yes. I don't think I would be making that elimination right now. Yeah. There you go. I think he would very much appreciate that. That leaves it to me. Mm hmm. We're down to four. We have Bob Barker, Bill Cullen, Gene Rayburn, and Alex Trebek. Ooh. That boy. is your uh, Mount Rushmore of game show hosts. It's a good Mount Rushmore. <sighs> Question is, am I going to make the elimination that will make everybody hate me? Don't do or, it. Or uh, these are all great hosts, some of which are woven into the very fabric of the televised game show themselves. Like from day one, A1 from day one, as they would say. I think I'm going to eliminate... I'm going to eliminate... <laughs> I want to do it. Don't I want do to it. do it. Don't do it. Should I do it? No. Should I do it? Be here's here's what's... He literally oh. made all of us cry two days ago. I know. I'm not discounting He hosted that. like six different game shows. In his giant game show, but you, you know, go ahead, kill him again. It's, it's how dare you? <laughs> I, I'm leaving this show, Mark, and I just want to save my way out. Man, what you're done is hurtful. Um, oh boy, I'm, I'm sort of playing 3D chess here because I, I, I know who you're going to eliminate. I know who you're going to eliminate. I know what you're going to do, and I don't think it's right. I will eliminate Gene Rayburn because I think we know him from he as great as he was. I think almost every other person here hosted multiple game shows for a lengthy period of time. So just that lack of versatility. I think there are slightly better hosts on here, but again, this is like we're getting down to one and one A and, and all yeah. and all of that. All right, Mark. Do go me, ahead. Do you want me to eliminate Bob Barker now? Bob Barker, Bill Cullen, Alex Trebek. Go ahead. I'm eliminating Bob Barker. All right. Go on down, Bob Barker. Go on down. <laughs> Sorry to leave you with this, but we always do this, and you know this, uh, the final decision, which we will back up 100%. All that stuff I said That's to Hal right. before, I was messing with Hal. If you need to eliminate Trebek, please do. Yeah, it only applies well, to me. <laughs> this is a toughie. It is. Um, boy. Take I us think I'm going to eliminate Jack Norris. <laughs> Um, How dare you? This is a tough. Is that the one that Christopher McDonald played, Shooter McGavin? No, that was um, <laughs> the other Nars, Jack Barry. Jack Barry was another person that we didn't even discuss, probably because of his role in the quiz show scandals, or mm -hmm. not his role, depending on who you ask. Oh, did he know? Did he not know? Okay, so we're down to Bill Cullen and Alex Trebek. Yes, I think that in this particular case. I think Bill Cullen and Alex Trebek both have points for versatility. Mm -hmm. They both hosted a bunch of different kinds of games. You know, Alex did High Rollers for a while. He did The Wizard of Odds, which was mm -hmm. his first show here. One of the few game shows with a uh, song with lyrics. The song was written by Alan Thicke. And Wait, a theme song with lyrics? Oh, yeah. that's, that's a Alan great Thicke idea. Theme song. Uh, the Wizard of Odds theme song by the Wizard of TV show theme song. Yeah. And Alex, also, I remember when I was little watching the $128,000 question, which mm -hmm. was their, their revival of the $64,000 question, and Alex Trebek hosted that. Now, where Alex edges out over Bill Cullen is that Bill Cullen didn't have that kind of longevity that Alex had with Jeopardy, where you have a person who has such a long run, he becomes so intertwined with the fabric of the show that he becomes part of the popular culture and appears in Cheers and appears mm -hmm. in The Simpsons and Saturday Night Live parodies and stuff. I don't think Bill Cullen had that sort of image and, and um, ubiquity. How's that for a word? I like it. So um, as much as I am a fan of Bill Cullen, and all that he accomplished, and I am a proud visitor to the Bill Cullen uh, website, which celebrates this man and his legacy. I think 
that the sentimental favorite is the one I'm going to opt to uh, include as our winner. So I, I will sadly eliminate Bill Cullen from the discussion. So that, that's where I am. I, what do you guys think? I say, how? People of the world, Craig laid it out the way we all played it out. Did that make sense? <laughs> don't <laughs> at me. I don't care. You got it. You get what I'm saying. Not only is he a pop culture icon, not only is he, even if you've never watched a single episode of Jeopardy in your life, you know who Alex Trebek is. He's become synonymous with trivia, with knowledge, with game shows. But beyond all of that, or maybe beneath all of that, he is a fantastic game show host. He paces the show brilliantly. So when there's a little extra time, he can stretch it out. When we get towards the end of a round and there isn't a lot of time, he knows how to move it along. The interview segments, the very short interview segments, he is never in the decades that he hosted that show until his untimely and tragic passing. Never did I feel like one of those interview segments, never did I feel it went over long. Or did I ever feel like I needed to know more about the person that he had just spoken with? <laughs> and that is a huge skill. You knew enough about the person to decide whether or not they were the contestant you were going to root for that episode. And that is what you do. You sort of pick your horse on that show and you get behind them and hope that they do well while also competing as yourself as the fourth contestant that will never possibly win. Alex Trebek embodies what it means to be a game show host and his ability to run that show for 36 years and would have been much longer had he not gotten ill and would have been shorter with a lot of other people who hosted the show. The fact that he continued the way that he did is incredible. And it's what makes him the greatest game show host in a field of fantastic hosts that we've talked about today. The number one is Alex Trebek. Who is Alex Trebek? He is the greatest game show host of all time. I messed that up. Whatever. You were there with me. That's it. This is my last show. Oh, Mark, hell. You're ruining this. Oh, oh you're ruining hell. hell. Pumpkin. That's an answer. That's an answer. Wait, Hal. Come on. Yes. No, no, don't you mean answered, answered and ask. asked? Answered and asked. Oh, yeah. Answered oh, yeah. and asked. <laughs> Damn. I'm, wait, can you hear this? That's me leaving. <laughs> All right, I'm back. Uh, answered Craig and asked. Craig Thank you for joining us. Now, I, I want you to tell everybody what you're up to and where they can follow you and all that stuff. But I also, you do Lego recreations of game show sets. Will I you do. tell us br like briefly about that? That's basically it. I, I decided that... Uh, like, where did know, it start? To, it you know. started because I, I, when you're a writer, especially when you're a writer who does a lot of animation and stuff, you have very little control over your domain. You're getting notes and you're getting stuff. So I wanted to have a, a hobby where I had control. And Lego is really, you know, nobody's telling you how to do this stuff. You can do it the way you want. And I decided to specialize and do uh, sets from TV shows and, and game shows too. But I did Hollywood Squares and Match Game. And there's a Facebook page, uh, the Brick Broadcast, where you can see some of these things. <laughs> okay. And I haven't done them in a while. I have some that I want to do in the future. But uh, so far, I've done Match Game. I'm rebuilding it so it has lights and a turntable that oh moves God. around. And, Amazing. Um, That's so did Hollywood Squares. I did uh, Press Your Luck. And Are you going to update your Press Your Luck? Well, you know, I might. I might. Right go. now, it's the old version. I didn't. Mean, I don't know if you're taking requests. <laughs> oh, sure. Absolutely. <laughs> but I've done uh, vintage ones like uh, 21 that you saw in the movie Quiz Show. Mm-hmm. It's tough because you have to, you know, when I did the match game, I had to send away to, there are special websites where you can order black market Lego directly. There's a thing called Bricklink where you can order pieces. So I had to get a lot of orange Lego. It's hard to come by orange. Sure. Lego. I did so not know until what, this moment that the plural of Lego was Lego. Yeah. Well, uh, technically you want to say Lego brand bricks. That's why ah. you know, they are trademarks. So when you see other Lego merchandisers, they're always calling themselves brick something because they can't call themselves Lego uh -huh. without uh, paying the Danes. People. Exactly. Uh, so that's uh, that's sort of an ongoing uh, hobby that I have. That is but so I've cool. I've also been expanding to uh, sets that are not game shows. I've been on oh. the I've done Get Smart with the. Uh, Oh, the, uh, cool. You know, With the Cone of Silence? Yeah, cone of Silence. And oh. uh, I did um, Fonz Jumping the Shark. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> you know, Ed's, the Ed Sullivan show with the Beatles. 
And hopefully at some point I want to do a book of the brick broadcast. But the website is, it's a website or it's a Facebook page? It's a brick Facebook broadcast. page, Brick Broadcast. I think it has my name in there. If you just type in Brick Broadcast, Craig Shemin into Facebook, it should come up. And then uh, people can find me on my website, craigshemin.com. Twitter, which I'm not that active on, is at Craig Shemin. And I'm working on a book now about Jim Henson's first TV show, Sam and Friends, which he did in college. Yes. So, uh, that oh, is the, the main project I'm doing. I have a few episodes that I've wrote of Clifford, the Big Red Dog, which are running on PBS Kids and on Amazon Prime. And the, you can buy my uh, Muppet character encyclopedia wherever fine books about oh. Muppets are sold. And I have a copy that you gave me, and it is fantastic. It and is on my Mount fan, Rushmore of books. Yeah, you have to have it. I appreciate like, it. If you're a Muppet fan yeah. in any way, shape, or form, get it. As, if you have kids who are getting into the Muppets, get it. If they're not into the Muppets yet, you want to get them into it, get it. Yeah, it's it is it really is. It is one of those books that just kind of it's never on the shelf. It always stays out. Yeah. And I is, I is it warped? It falls over. Is that what? Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I, I, I oh, it's because I left it in the pool. Uh, <laughs> you and your you pool got one of those <laughs> the one of the defective copies with that round. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's the wires that work the hands of the book keep yeah. getting in the way on the yeah. bookshelf. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> well, that was a fun book to do because I, I could, could make up whatever I wanted to on most of these. Uh, uh, some of these characters only appeared in one show. Just give them so, all their details. Yeah. It's so fun. You are such a delight and such a yes. fun guy and such a brilliant font of knowledge that we always get so excited to have you here. This is a delight, guys. And you've been such a huge supporter of the show. The, the Muppet episodes that we did at the Museum of the Moving Image would not have happened without you. You facilitated all of that. It was and a fun you. day. It was a fun day. Oh, was, man. And, uh, I listen to you guys, and I, I'm a proud supporter uh, oh, of Maximum you. Fun. Thank you. And say hi to Stephanie for us. This topic is closed, but there are many more topics to discuss, so please reach out to us on Twitter or email us at wegotthispodcast at gmail.com or go to our Facebook group, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash we got this podcast. Thank you to producer Ken Plume, researcher Kate McManus for a staggering google sheet that she put together yeah. for this one really really appreciated wonderful work as always thank you to qa engineer jen alba and graphic designer uri kelman and thanks of course to our musicians jonathan dinerstein and mike Furman for our score and lyrics laden theme song respectively and thanks to you the people of the world for giving us a chance to sit and talk with craig about game shows a thing we all love we hope that you will all come on down and win fabulous prizes and lots of cash when we do our million dollar we got this episode until then thank you thank you thank you for how love i'm mark gagliardi for mark gagliardi i'm how love and don't worry everybody we got this we got this i assume the match game theme is playing under all that right yeah ken can you drop that in nope <laughs> <laughs> over and over and over again MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Audience supporting.